Joining me now to talk more about this, Colby Hall, News Nation media contributor and founding editor of Mediaite.com. Uh, Colby, thank you. So this is a billionaire tech brawl, right, on a lot of different levels. Round one, does this go to Zuckerberg with threads? I think so far, yes. Right now, it looks like Zuckerberg's getting the better of Elon Musk. But I have to tell you, watching that package that Sloan uh, did just then, I, I kind of felt like I was watching an old National Geographic with Jane Goodall talking about silverback gorillas and, <laughs> and being territorial. I mean, it's so, like, the anthropology here is kind of crazy that you have two of the most powerful and wealthiest men is literally going head-to-head -head and using social media as a battle, which could all just be an undercard for this silly cage match, which is absurd and stupid, but wildly entertaining. And, you know, if that goes off, I, I pay for pay for view to watch Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg go at it, as silly as it sounds. So, yeah, there's lots of personality, lots of drama. Um, I think there's a lot yet still to evolve. Yeah, and I guess I'm wondering, is it just a lot of ego, right? These billionaires battling out, or is there a lot to lose in this tech battle of these two giants? Well, that, I, that's a great question, and I think the answer is both. I think, um, I think you don't get to the position that you were in with Zuckerberg or Musk without an enormous ego. I mean, I think both are, it's fair to call them megalomaniacs, but... Um, but there's also a business opportunity. And Elon Musk purchased Twitter for $44 billion, realized he overpaid, tried to get out of it, and then just, you know, three or four months later said that it was worth $20 billion. And he's cut a lot of costs, made a lot of changes, and has sort of, Twitter was always something of a cesspool, but he's kind of made the product much worse. And, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, who came off of a pretty bad business decision in launching Metaverse, saw an opportunity and he seamlessly sort of rushed to market this Instagram version of threads, which really kind of evokes an older version of Twitter. It's, it's you know, all the people that you follow on, on threads are your Instagram friends. So it's wonderfully devoid of hate and bigotry and bots. And it sort of, it's like traveling back to 2010 in a really nice way. It's, it's hard to say whether or not it will be truly the Twitter killer. I don't think it will. But if it forces Elon Musk to make some changes and make Twitter a better product, then I think that'll be good for everyone. Yeah, competition is good. I think Zuckerberg says it feels like the beginning of something special. So we'll see. But outside of the ring, the legal teams are already starting to battle this out. Uh, Musk and his team at Twitter are threatening legal action. They say uh, competition is fine. Cheating is not. So what are the grounds here? What are they claiming? You know, I, it's sort of above my pay grade um, to get into the sort of the weeds here. They did file a cease and desist letter. And basically what they're saying is that, uh, you know, uh, Zuckerberg hired or rather Meta hired a bunch of engineers that had been let go or laid off from Twitter. And that that sort of um, intellectual property was used to, to rush threads to market. Clearly, there are uh, non-disclosure agreements and deals that were signed when these people were laid off. Whether or not that information that was used was proprietary I mean, that's pretty deep level coding that, you know, it's hard to imagine a judge or a judicial system being, you know, sort of versed enough in that sort of coding to, to make it. To, I think it's a lot of posture. I don't think that anything will come of this. At, it, maybe Zuckerberg will spend some money. He's got a lot of money to spend, but it's all posture. It's all fighting. And I think the genie's out of the bottle now with threads. And yeah. uh, again, you know, 100 million posts in 36 hours is pretty stunning. I mean, that's nuts. Right, and 50 million already on it, kind of testing it out. So I guess we're wondering, come 2024, the presidential election, how big of a player a Threads might be in the race for the White House? It, it's a great question. And, and I wonder how much more, I mean, I, it feels like 2016 and 2020 were our social media elections. And I almost feel like we're post social media in terms of how much influence because we've sort of been there, done that. And I think we're all collectively think more critically about this sort of stuff. Or maybe that's wishful thinking. Maybe I just want us to get past the fact that social media can have such a big impact and influence. We'll see. It seems as though Threads is willing to be kind of a kinder, gentler, less partisan perspective. Um, but it's honestly, at this point, it's all conjecture. Who knows? It will be interesting to follow as a, as a side battle 
amongst all the other battles that are going on in the run to 2024. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.